what I want to do tonight, uh, we're going to get back to meme stock mania. You know, we're going to get back to talking about uh, investing. We're going to get back to talking about stocks. We're going to get back to doing all that. But what we want to do tonight is we want to bring in somebody that's amazing. We want to bring in somebody that's um, phenomenal, somebody that has definitely changed my life for the better. Um, not just when it comes to talking about the stock market, not when it just comes to uh, changing your life spiritually, uh, financially. Uh, we definitely want to bring in, man, I, I, I was like, I'm a little like, I feel good about this, right? But we in the middle of the show, Trapping Tuesdays, um, we had a little technical difficulty just now. And, and it's crazy that we had that technical difficulty right before this. Uh, if y'all are on Trapping Tuesdays, y'all come into the show because it's going to be amazing. The quality going to be phenomenal the way that you see it. Um, and we're going to see it from a different level. Um, I think for me on my journey, as I take a little minute, for me on my journey, um, I've always seek guidance. I've always seeked growth. And so what we're going to do tonight, we're going to bring somebody special in. Uh, we're going to bring somebody phenomenal in. And so tonight, Bishop, how you doing? I'm great, man. How are you? I am amazing. So what I want to do, I just want to give you, a, I want to give you the proper introduction that you need, right? So... Um, I have the, the privilege and the honor of introducing you to someone who needs no introduction, a powerhouse of a man who has both changed the game, not just in the spiritual world, not just giving us right spiritually, but also financially, from entrepreneurship to showing us what fatherhood looks like, husbandry looks like, for showing us what manhood looks like, how to overcome adversity and still stay true to yourself. Bishop, we want to just tell you thank you for joining us tonight. The one, the only Bishop T.D. Jakes, the man of the Potter's house. His wisdom transcends and touches us all in so many different ways. So tonight, I just want to tell you thank you, and we are honored to have you tonight. All right, you said something, though, that I love because you said that we got to go from hustle to harvest. That, that's, so, that's so pivotal and iconic, um, just hearing that. And I thought about something. Um, too many times, I wrote this down, and I'm glad you said that. Too many times we get taught, taught about the promise of entrepreneurship and not the processes that come with entrepreneurship, the systems, right? And I think that this is a reason why so many people fail in entrepreneurship because they get sold on how great it is, but they never have the documentation right. that takes us to the next level. Um, and so I, and I know that with so many opportunities at Good Soil, we're gonna get to learn those processes along the way too from some of those teachers and some of the speakers that you have given us, how important is it for you to have processes? Because I always think that the, the promise is a byproduct of the processes that we have persevered through. You're absolutely right, particularly in business. You don't really uh, manage people. You lead people. You manage processes. Mm. The, and a lot of people are trying to manage people. People don't like to be managed. Mm. The, you want to manage the process. If you get the process right, the people might be the entered. People come, people go, they move, they die, they get sick, they get pregnant, they do all kinds of stuff. But when I look at your own life and your own story, you, you transformed your life by equipping yourself with knowledge. The Bible says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge businesses perish for the lack of knowledge and so it's not about trying to make you rich it's it's about trying to make you able to send your kids to the college of their choice uh it's it's about being able to help people who are downtrodden without destroying yourself uh it's about being able to take a vacation and spend some quality time and 
the leading cause of divorce is over finances. So it affects every area of your life. And then we have to understand it. We have been trained both at the school and at home and in community that the best thing you can hope for is go to school, go to college, run up a big debt, get a job, spend the rest of your life trying to pay it off, never realizing that nobody hires you to make you wealthy. They hire you to make them wealthy. Mm. So so it is, it is impossible for people who came to this country as a product that were owned to get through their brain ownership. See, see, we're just a few generations from being property. And now we have come to a point of ownership. And it's not about capital alone. It's about mentality. But when you have been bought and sold, it affects the way you think. It affects your self-esteem. It affects what you want out of life. It affects what you ask for. You're trying to negotiate a raise when you are be negotiating a business. To own is something that's not in our purview. We struggle with it about housing. We struggle with it about businesses. We struggle with it about every area of our lives. We are the nation's leading consumers and first investors. Uh, and even though that's our to change it has not the digital the so pervasive almost rivaling what it was back in the 60s and so we have to get a different mindset about owning and negotiating from a position of strength even if you have to own through partnership mm, i like <laughs> even that even if you have to own through partnership i like that because when i think about um you said somehow we are the biggest consumers and you said that it's growing. I also realized, I talked about this earlier, of us being anchored to our limitations. And those limitations, a lot of times come from lack of experience and lack of exposure. And so I thought about us right. having um, insufficient knowledge and kind of like a bank, if you have insufficient money in the bank, you can't withdraw anything, right? So if we have insufficient right. knowledge and insufficient experience, that is one of the reasons why we have insufficient success. And so I just want to say how important that is for Good Soil for being in an area, for being in an environment, for being in an incubator that can give us some experience, that can give us knowledge so we can be around people who have that success. Um, and I think about I think about something you said, but I want to reword it and rephrase it. Um, a while back, I heard you say that uh, Moses, God took Moses from Egypt, and when he was in the desert, he was preparing Moses to bring the, the Hebrews back through the desert, right? right? He was preparing them. And I thought about that, and I thought about he was a right, he was the right teacher because most time in entrepreneurship, we have now people teaching from theory and not from practicality. There was no way they could have made it through the desert without the practicality of Moses already being through it. So can you tell us about that? Because I know, I heard you once say that you were born between two dead babies. And I'm, that's, that's right. amazing for me because you were surrounded by debt, but yet you blossomed to be one of the most iconic people of our time. How is that possible? And how can we look at that and say, yo, I need to be in good soil because I can also blossom into something amazing as well? You know, uh, throughout the scriptures, uh, redemption always comes from one from among you. If you can't relate to your teacher, you can't relate to the teaching. And so often, some, you have to have gone through a desert to lead me through a desert. You have to have made mistakes in order to lead me through my mistakes. Because you speak my language, because you're in my purview, uh, because I can relate to you. Not because of your strengths, but because of your failures. If, if we took a bow and arrow and we got ready to shoot it really far, we could only shoot it as far as we pulled it back. The further back we pull it, the more it propels it. Mm. So those of us who are really destined to go far often go through a time and a period where we are greatly pulled back. 
and Moses was pulled back. He, he left Egypt as a runaway. He left uh, Egypt as an escape artist trying to avoid being arrested. He spent 40 years hiding from Pharaoh. And all of a sudden, he said, enough. And whenever you decide it's enough, you got to change your mentality and start confronting what you were running from. Mm. Listen, let, 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 me, let me add something, too. We excel wherever the floor is flat and the rules are clear. We excel on the football field. The, 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 the turf is flat. The rules are clear. A touchdown becomes possible. Mm. Okay. On the basketball court, the court is flat. The rules are clear. We excel. Anywhere the floor is flat. Hip hop. The floor is flat. The rules are clear. And in art and in film and in television. When it comes to business, the floor has not always been flat. And the rules have not always been clear. Mm. And if they were clear, they weren't clear to us. So people like yourself and people like myself who, had, who, who dug ditches and put in gas lines and, <laughs> and fed my children by running a lawnmower and started a lawnmower service and hired people and cut grass to buy groceries to feed my kids when my gas was off and my lights were off and my car had been repossessed. I, 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 I know how to get down there with you. I, I, I know how to make cornbread without milk. Come on, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know what it is to scratch your way up. And so when you come in a room full of people who get it, who understand what you are often ashamed of, and you can, if you can see it, you can be it. But if you can't get in a room where you can see it, and everybody around you is in despair. Let me tell you how important the environment is. The stats say that a boy raised without a father, if he lives near somebody who has a father, he is far less likely to go to jail than somebody who has never seen it. Even though it's not his father and he's not in the house, if he can see it, okay? So good soil is designed to put you in an environment where you can see it. And, and it's a registration, and we've got a special just for your audience tonight that I'm really excited about. I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. But, but I don't think it's a registration, really. I think it's an investment. The reason we are consumers is that we're not taught to invest. We don't invest in ourselves. Mm. We don't invest by what we read. We don't invest by who we follow. We don't invest by what we see because we need immediate gratification. So what we, we won't invest, but we will buy. Mm. I like that. Okay. So I, can you hear so, me? So I gave transactional relationships. Mm. We got transactional business relationships. We got transactional situations all over our lives. And when it comes to entrepreneurship, you got to move from that way of thinking and begin to think in terms of delayed gratification. When I first started my company, TDJ's Enterprises is older than the Potter's House. Mm. When I first started my company, it was two years before I got paid. Because every time I got a dollar, I put it back in the business. I put it back into hiring people. I put it back in building before building the right people around you gives you the structure that prepares you for the stress. If you're if you're stressed out and you don't have the right stru structure, getting more structure up under you is good people. My wife is always telling me about taking vacations. And, <laughs> and, and she's right. I should take more th than I do. But I tell her, having a good leader is a vacation. Mm. Because if I go to Hawaii and I'm going to be sitting on the beach worried, if, if, I, if, if I go to Timbuktu and I'm going to be sitting out there trying to solve problems, I might as well have stayed at home. So putting people around you who can solve problems, who bring you solutions and not problems, are the kinds of people that need, you need to surround yourself with 
not people who add weight, people who take away weight so that you can become more profitable and then not spend all of the profit, invest the profit back in the business, mutual funds, real estate, duplexes, quadruplexes. There's so many things that you can do now in ownership. You can go out and buy, get an FHA loan, five percent or so down, get a duplex, rent out the other three uh, places, let them pay you. You can stay there rent free. There's all kinds of things you can do other than complain about nobody's hearing me and nobody's helping me. But you got to have a flat floor that comes with information and you got to have clear rules. And so when you get, when the rules are clear and the floor is flat, we can hoop. <laughs> <laughs> I, ro- I rolled down something, Bishop, when you said that. Um, I- I've always had this saying that complaining is the weakest emotion that we can have. Right? <clears throat> I wrote that down. Com- complaining is the weakest emotion that we have because it, it does nothing but create an emotion in you that looks at everyone else. It looks for excuses instead of solutions, right? And in business, um, I, I, you talked about us going through and persevering. One of the things for me was, you know, watching my mother go to prison when I was 16, losing my grandmother. So for a long stretch of my life, Bishop, um, I was homeless and not just the homeless where you know, you don't want to go somewhere. It's a home as well. My people just couldn't take me in. So I slept in an abandoned house. I slept in a car in New Orleans for a couple of years. And, and that resilience in me. So when I hear you speak, and I, I'm, so, I'm so fond of where you are because when I look at myself, I'm like, okay, I'm 40. You know, Bishop is in his 60s. And if that's the meter, right. then I still got 20 more years to go at this thing. You know, <laughs> yes. I still got 20 more years to go. So I'm all right. I'm in a good space right now. Um, and that resiliency allowed me to go towards failure instead of running from it. Um, I always have this saying where you have to increase your capacity before you can increase your territory. And I look at people mm-hmm. like David who had to increase his capacity from fighting a lion and fighting a bear. And, and, even, um, and even that, I apologize, even that put him in position to slay Goliath, right? He could increase his capacity to be able to go through those things. So can you tell us how did you increase your capacity, how important it was for you to go from T.D. Jake's production to the powerhouse? I wasn't even trying to end up. I I never prayed, make me bigger. I prayed, make me better. Mm. Uh, I I didn't ask to be rich. I asked to be effective. See, because it, 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 I, I didn't want to be famous if, if I could affect it. So, so you, you got to be effective to being a good product or a good service that you provide at a fair price that is that exceeds the expectations of your of, of your consumer is vitally important. Number two, build your business around somebody's problem. Anytime your business solves a problem, your marketing expense goes down. You don't have to spend a lot of money marketing a funeral home. <laughs> you just don't. You just don't. Because your your business solves a problem. Mm. It solves a problem. Anytime your business solves a problem for somebody, then it becomes a solution for somebody. I want to go back to the thing about complaining. Complaining is putting energy behind you. What happened to you, what you've been through. Strategy is taking the energy and putting it in front of you, where you're going to, not where you're coming from. You wouldn't get on the interstate and and get stuck looking in the rear view mirror because you're going to run into something. And yet our gaze is so fixed on what happened behind us that we never get beyond it to start looking at what is coming in front of us. And so this is an opportunity uh, that, that, that the, you know, I thought, to be honest with you, I thought the hardest part would be getting capital from Fortune 100 companies to invest in the idea of mobilizing an army of people who have been overlooked, left out, 
uh, tossed aside and forgotten about. Now, it wasn't easy, mm. but, but we did get it done. We want to give away the fast pitch competition people who go after business. And we would rather stay at home and complain about nobody's helping us, not understanding that God often answers prayers through opportunities that we ignore. Mm. Hold up, Bishop. You got to repeat that. You can't just say that. You can't just tell us that and get to the next sentence, right? You can tell us, t tell us that one more time. God often, I need to write that down. God often answers prayers through opportunities that we ignore because we, we want it to fall in our lap. We, we, we want, we want to find a companion, but we don't want to leave the house. We think he or she is going to ring the doorbell like a FedEx man and come with the delivery. You have to go get it. You have to go where it is. You have to invest in it and not just be in the room trying to be the sharpest person in the room. Mm -hmm. You want to get the information. I don't, I, don't, I don't care if you got on a jogging suit or raggedy jeans. You want to get the information because it's not what's on you. It's not what we leave on you. It's what we put in you mm -hmm. that makes you able to succeed and to be, become successful, whatever you call success. I'm not here to tell you what success is for you. What is successful to one person may not be successful to another. <coughs> but, excuse me. But as you, you target certain goals that you say is success, it may be med college, it may be a young God. I don't know your business is in place it's like having a second floor on your house but they forgot to build a staircase <laughs> <laughs> it's there but you can't get to can't it get to it that's why it says the steps of a good man come on are ordered by the lord there, there are steps there are steps irrespective of the tone or even the age because i want to tell you also that most of the billionaires in this country became billionaires after 50. Mm, that's true. So this notion that, that I'm 30, I'm behind, I'm 40, I'm too, I, I'm too late. I'm, no, 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 no. The older you get, the better it gets. Mm -hmm. If you make good choices, if you make good decisions, you become more fruitful because you become less distracted so what we're trying to do at good soil is to get our people to focus and the reason i think it's important and i want to say this i have to say come on this. give it to us bishop artificial intelligence is going to give us cures it's going to give us better surgeries it's going to give us uber it's going to give us fast food it's going to give us a whole lot of things but it's also going to take away mm -hmm. 70 million jobs over the next five, 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 which is almost almost a third of them. That is, if we don't recycle them and retrain them for the 80 million jobs that it's going to create, then we're going to be in trouble. So if jobs are the only language that we speak, and when they lose 70 people or develop or do artificial intelligence, that means we're going to drop below the poverty line again, below the poverty line. And so we have, we have a fierce urgency, a fierce urgency. We've only got a few years to get this together. We can't spend it pulling each other down. We can't spend it procrastinating. God knows we can't spend it complaining. We got to prep ourselves for what's next. And you talk a lot about the stock market, investing in the stock market, and the benefits of investing in the stock market. We can't follow our grandma's rule and put the money up under the mattress. Mm -mm. Okay, you, that's not going to work for you. It, we can't. We can't just put it in the bank. The interest rates are so low mm -hmm. that by the time you pay capital gains on the interest that you made, but let me go beyond the stock market. You can create your own stock market Come on. by investing by developing equity funds, mm -hmm. by investing in real estate, mm -hmm. by resisting the temptation to consume better than you invest. Mm -hmm. You should never, ever, ever look better than your network. Mm. Bishop, I was, 
I was uh, in the process right now of, of, of buying a building and I had to learn something just now uh, recently. Uh, the, the lender told me financially you're good, but we got to make sure you look good on paper. Right. And, and I never understood what that meant. I never heard of it before. And so I had to go through the process of looking at my net worth, filling out a personal financial statement. I was like, whoa, it, it took me, like all I knew was my money in the stock market, I own a house and I have employees, I got business structure. And he was like, no, if you're going to a lender, you have to look good on paper. We don't care, we need to see it and doc. And that took me for a ride that I never thought I would be on but it, it gave me that knowledge. And so you said something that was so profound. You said that as you get older, you start making these better decisions. And I wanna talk about how important that is in good soil, because what it sounds like to me is when we come to good soil, we get fertilized. We get prepped for the promise. We get fertilized, right? We are yeah, good seeds yeah. and, and you, be, you, you put us in this incubator to, to fertilize us. And I, and I wrote something down because we can't be consumers. You are you are one hundred percent correct. I preach that. I pound the table that a dollar that's not moving is a dollar that's losing. And so we always need our money to be moving. And so I said, there's three things that we should always spend our money on. It's information, access, and assets. We should always be spending Absolutely. our money on those three things. And I look at good saw you as actually all three. It is the information. It is the access and then the information becomes an asset and we become the asset because we have the information. So I want you to tell us, like I know you told me you got something for our people. Uh, could you explain that to us? Cause I'm gonna tell you like, I always take a picture in the video when I come to the potter's house. Uh, I come once a month, right? I come once a month. I come to just get spiritually refueled every time. Um, and I, I like to look at my show as a financial refuelment, where we bring people here during the week, they're making these financial decisions, and we want them to be refueled. And I want my audience to come to the Potter's House because they know how much I am about educating myself. I want them to come to Good Soil. I want us to be there. So tell us what you have for us, Bishop, when we come there. <clears throat> One of the things I learned about my church that really shocked me, uh, only 42% of African-Americans own their own home. Mm. In the Potter's House, 80%, 80% of my members own their own home. That's leadership. Because we have, yeah, you see, that, that, that we, that's a 100% increase by teaching and training and, and, and empowering people, giving people permission to dream again mm. after they've been beat down and oppressed. It, it, we, the, what sets us apart, there are other places where you can go and get great information, but they're not always talking to us with a shared experience. When we come from similar experiences, we speak the same language, and I'm not just talking about English. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about the ability to what worries you, what keeps you up at night what your concerns are, what, what your cultural uniquenesses are. And, and, and after, for example, African-American women are going into business more readily than any other people group, not only through the fast pitch, but putting you in a room where you can sit down with people and get coaching, get mentoring, get access to capital, look good on paper, as you talk about, is very important. So that your portfolio, you as a portfolio, become stronger and stronger and stronger we we want to talk about things like uh uh do you have a, a will do you have life insurance do you have all of these are assets and you might say well you know that's money after i'm dead not necessarily if, if you get a life policy you can both have to pay taxes on it, can pay yourself back at a better stage in your life, or it can come out of your death benefit. We don't we don't understand all of the benefits that come along with things like estate planning mm. because we think it's for rich people. No, it's just for people. It's it's another process. It's it's another construct that we need to develop in order to prepare service coming in if you don't have nothing to put it in. So, so you want to create all of these 
vehicles through which you can put the harvest in. Mm. And when I talk about harvest, one of the greatest resources that we can have is relationships. Yes. And if you are not relational, you, you'll never be resourceful because you're only as resourceful as you are relational. Mm -hmm. Nature teaches us that fruit comes to cross-pollinization. So if you want to follow the command of scripture and be fruitful, <laughs> you can't do that. It's not good for man to be alone. You can't do this alone. I know you're afraid to trust people. I know you're afraid to enter into partnerships. I know you're afraid of be being mistreated. <laughs> I get all of that. But there is a word called contract. <laughs> contract is the great equalizer. Contracts create trust because they set parameters, the rules, and you don't have to give up ownership to create a class B status and create a dance for people to uh, invest in your business without decreasing your ownership of the business. They can still be an investor in your business. And first of all, let's get the business. Come on. Let's stop doing DBAs. And let's get LLPs and let's get the business to be a real, real legitimate business. Let's business on its feet. Let's set up an S corporation or a C corporation and determine which one is going to be best for you. Uh, if it's an S corporation, uh, at the end of the year, you're paying income tax, but you're not paying corporate tax and then having to turn around and pay income tax, which is double dipping. Mm -hmm. So understanding which one is going to be best for you and incorporating it is important because if somebody slips in your ice cream parlor and falls, they can sue the business, but they can't sue you. But if you're just DBA, if you're just Wall Street Trapper doing business Come on. at the ice cream machine, <laughs> then I can, I can sue you and the machine and your house and your car and everything you got. When you incorporate, you're saying the business is a separate entity from me. You can sue it. But you can, well, you can sue me, but it's not going to work because I put a firewall mm. between me and my business. When I incorporate, it becomes an entity unto itself. Understanding the, the relevance of doing things like that rather than, and here's the problem. We take our talent to the marketplace without putting it in a shell of a business to protect it from being violated. Mm. And so we don't understand that this isn't about being talented. You can hire talent. You can hire talent. A lot of times we go into business because we're talented. But if you're not business-minded and develop a business argument, your talent will be exploited. Look at the great singers we've had who could sing the paint off the wall <laughs> and die broke. It is not enough to be talented. You have to be incorporated. You have to be established. And, and that's some, it may be a process. You may start out just doing what you do the way you do it. But, but sooner or later, we have to come to the point that we go from crying to be on the stage to crying out, let me own the stage. Mm. 